All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Sean T.D. Stewart, the home gamer, playing another game where I try not to die. And today we're playing, again, World of Tanks. Um, and while battles are loading, I will be reading more uh, excerpts from Philip K. Dick's service call. Where I left off was, he was being asked, how long have you been repairing swivels? Or just after that. So that's where we'll continue. So let me go ahead and uh, join a battle. I'm in the queue. How long have you been repairing swivels? For six years and three months, the repairman asserted. Pride took place of embarrassment. In junior high, I showed a straight A record in swivel maintenance aptitude. His meager chest swelled. I'm a born swivel man. Fine, Cortland agreed uneasily. He couldn't believe the industry was that big. They gave tests in junior high school. Was swivel maintenance considered a basic talent? Like simple manipulation and manual dexterity, had swivel work become as fundamental as musical talent or as the ability to conceive spatial relationships? Well, the repairman said briskly, gathering up his bulging toolkit, I'm all ready to get started. I have to be back at the shop before long. I've got a lot of other calls. Bluntly, Pestbroke spoke, stepped up squarely in front of the thin young man. What is a swivel? he demanded. I'm tired of this damn fooling around. You say you work on these things? What are they? That's a simple enough question. They must be something. Why? The young man said hesitantly. I mean, that's hard to say. Suppose, well, suppose you ask me what a cat or dog is. How can I answer that? We're getting nowhere, Anderson spoke up. The swivel is manufactured, isn't it? You must have schematics then. Hand them over. The young repairman gripped his toolkit defensively. What in the world is the matter, sir? If this is your idea of a joke. He turned back to Cortland. I like to start work. I really don't have much time. Standing in the corner, a hand shoved deep in his pockets, McDowell said slowly, I've been thinking about getting a swivel. The missus thinks we ought to have one. Oh, certainly, the repairman agreed, color rising in his cheeks. He rushed on. I'm surprised you don't have a swivel already. In fact, I can't imagine what's wrong with you people. You're all acting oddly. Where, if I may ask, do you come from? Why are you so, well, so uninformed? These people, Cortland explained, come from the part of the country where there aren't any swivels. Instantly, the repairman's face hardened with suspicion. Oh, he said sharply. Interesting. What part of the country is that? Again, Cortland had said the wrong thing. He knew that. While well, he floundered for a response, McDowell cleared his throat and ex in inexorably went on. Anyhow, he said, we've been meaning to get one. You have any folders with you? Pictures of different models? The repairman responded. I'm afraid not, sir, but if you will give me your address, I will have the sales department send you information. And if you want a qualified representative, I can call you at your convenience and describe the advantages of owning a swivel. The swivel was first de was developed in 1963. Hurley asked. That's right. The repairman's suspicious suspicions had momentarily lulled, and just in time too. Let me say this: if Wright hadn't got his first model going, there wouldn't be any human beings left alive. You people here who don't own swivels. You may not know it, and you certainly act as if you didn't know it, but you're alive right now because of old R.J. Wright. It's swivels that keep the world going. Opening his black case, the repairman briskly brought out a complicated apparatus of tubes and wiring. He filled a drum with clear fluid, sealed it, tried the plunger, and straightened up. I'll start out with a shot of DX. That usually puts them back into operation. 
What is DX? Anderson asked quietly. Surprised at the question, the repairman answered, It's a high-protein food concentrate. We found, we found that 90% of our early service calls are a result of improper diet. People just don't know how to care for their new swivel. My God, Anderson said feebly, it's alive. Cortland's mind took a nosedive. He had been wrong. It wasn't precisely a repairman who stood gathering his equipment together. The man had come to fix the swivel all right, but his capacity was slightly different than Cortland had supposed. He wasn't a repairman. He was a veterinarian. Laying out instruments and meters, the young man explained, the new swivels are a lot more complex than the early models. I need all this before I can even get started. But blame the war. The war? Faye Cortland echoed apprehensively. Not the early war, the big one, in 75. That little war in 61 wasn't really much, you know. I suppose that Wright was originally an army engineer. Stationed over in, well, I guess it was called Europe. I believe the idea came to him because of all those refugees pouring across the border. Yes, I'm sure that's how it was. During the little war back in 61, they came across by the millions. And they went the other way, too. My goodness, people were shifting back and forth between two camps. It was revolting. Uh, I'm not clear on my history, Cortland said thickly. I never paid much attention in school. The 61 war? That was between Russia and America? Oh, the repairman said. It was between everybody. Russia headed the eastern side, of course, and America the west. But everybody was in it. That was the little war, though. That didn't count. Little? Faye demanded, horrified. Oh, looks like I got kicked. Let's uh, try again. Well, that repairman admitted. I suppose it looked like a lot at the time, but I mean, there were buildings still standing afterwards, and it only lasted a few months. Oh, who won? Anderson croaked. The, repair, the repairman tittered. W won? What an odd question. Well, there were more people left in Eastern, in the Eastern Bloc, if that's what you mean. Anyhow, the importance of the 61 War, and I'm sure your history teachers made that clear, was that Swibbles appeared. Was that Swibbles appeared? R.J. Wright got his idea from the camp changers that appeared in that war. So by 75, when the real war came along, we had plenty of Swibbles. Thoughtfully, he added, "In fact, I'd say the real war was a war over Swibbles." I mean, it was the last war, and it was the war between the people who wanted swibbles and those who didn't. Complacently, he finished. Needless to say, we won. After a time, Cortland managed to ask, What happened to the others? Those who didn't want swibbles. Why, the repairman said gently, the swibbles got them. Shakily, Cortland started his pipe going. I didn't know about that. What do you mean? Pest broke the man hoarsely. How did they get them? What did they do? Astonished, the repairman shook his head. I didn't know there was such an ignorance in lay circles. The position of pundit obviously pleased him. Sticking out his bony chest, he proceeded to lecture the circle of intent faces on the fundamentals of history. Wright's first aid-driven swivel was crude, of course, but it served its purpose. Originally, it was able to di differentiate the camp shifters into two groups, those who had really seen the light and those who were insincere, those who were, getting, those who were going to shift back, who weren't really loyal. The authorities wanted to know which of the shifters had really come over to the West and which were spies and secret agents. That was the original swivel function, but that was nothing compared to now. Uh, no, Cortland agreed paralyzed. Nothing at all. Now, the repairman said sleekly, sleekly, we don't deal with such crudities. It's absurd to wait until an individual has accepted a contrary ideology and then hope he'll shift away from it. In a way, it's ironic, isn't it? After the 61 war, there was really only one contrary ideology, those who opposed the swivels. He laughed happily. So the swivels differentiated those who didn't want to be differentiated by swivels. My, that was quite a war. Because that was that was a messy war with a lot of bombs and jelly gasoline. 
That was a scientific war. None of that random pulverizing. That was just swivels going down into cellars and ruins and hiding places and digging out those contra persons one by one until we had all of them. So now, he finished gathering up his equipment, we don't have to worry about wars or anything of that sort. There won't be any more conflicts because we don't have any contrary ideologies. As Wright showed, it doesn't really matter what ideology we have. It isn't important whether it's communism or free enterprise or socialism or fascism or slavery. What's important is that every one of us agrees completely that we're all absolutely loyal. And as long as we have our swivels, he winked knowingly at Cortland. Well, as a new swivel owner, you found out the advantages. You know the sense of security and satisfaction in being certain that your ideology is exactly congruent with that of everybody else in the world. And there's no possibility, no chance whatsoever that you'll go astray and that some passing sw swivel will feed on you. It was McDowell who managed to pull himself together first. Uh, y yeah, he said ironically. It certainly sounds like what the missus and I want. Oh, you ought to have a swivel of your own, the repairman urged. Consider if you have your own swivel, it'll adjust you automatically. It'll keep you on the right track without strain or fuss. You'll always know you're not going you're not going wrong remember the swivel slogan why be half loyal with your own swivel your outlook will be corrected by painless degrees but if you wait if you just hope you're on the right track why one of these days you may walk into a friend's living room and his swivel may just simply crack you open open and drink you down all right, let's try to get in battle again. I can't get in, apparently. Swivel may simply crack you open and drink you down. Of course, he reflected. A passing swivel may still get you in time to straighten you out, but usually it's too late. Usually, he smiled, usually people go beyond redemption once they get started. And your job, Pestbroke muttered, is to keep the swivels working. They don't go out of adjustment. They they do get out of adjustment left to themselves. It's kind of a paradox, Pestbroke pursued. The swivels keep us in adjustment, and we keep them in adjustment. It's a closed circle. The repairman was intrigued. Yes, that's an interesting way of putting it, but we must keep control over the swivels, of course, so they don't die, he shivered. Or worse. Die? Hurley said. Still not understanding. But if they're built, wrinkling his brow, he said, either they're machines or they're alive. Which is it? Partic patiently, the repairman explained elementary physics. Swivel culture is an organ organic phenotype, evolved in a protein medium under controlled conditions. The directing neurological tissue that forms the basis of the swivel is alive. Certainly. But in the sense that it grows, thinks, feeds, excretes waste, yes, it's definitely alive. But the swivel as a functioning whole is a manufactured item. The organic tissue is inserted in the master tank and then sealed. I certainly don't repair that. I give it nutrients to restore a proper balance of diet. And I try to deal with parasitic organisms that find their way into it. I try to keep it adjusted and healthy. The balance of the organism is, of course, Totally manic mechanical. The swivel has direct access to human minds, Anderson asked, fascinated. Naturally, it's an artificially evolved telepathic metazoan. And with it, Wright solved the basic problem of modern times. The existence of diverse, wearing ideological fashions, the presence of disloyalty and dissent, and the words of General Steiner's famous aphorism, war is an extension of the disagreement from the voting booth to the battlefield. And the preamble of the World Service Charter, war, if it is to be eliminated, must be eliminated from the minds of men, for it is in the minds of men that disagreement begins. Up until 1963, we had no way to get into the minds of men. Up until 1963, 
the problem was unsolvable. Thank God, Faye said clearly. The repairman Fade failed to hear her. He was carried away by his own enthusiasm. By means of the swivel, we've managed to transform the basic sociological problem of loyalty into routine technical matter. To the mere matter of maintenance and repair, our only concern is keep the swivels functioning correctly. The rest is up to them. In other words, Cortland said faintly, you repairmen are the only controlling influence over the swivels. You represent the total human agency standing above these machines? The repairman reflected. I suppose so, he admitted modestly. Yes, that's correct. Except for you, they pretty damn well manage the human race. The bony chest swelled with complacent, confident pride. I suppose you could say that. Look, Cortland said thickly. He grabbed hold of the man's arm. How the hell can you be sure? Are you really in control? A crazy hope was rising up inside him. As long as men had power over the swibbles, there was a chance to roll things back. The swibbles could be disassembled, taken apart piece by piece. As long as the swibbles had to submit to human servicing, that wasn't quite hopeless. What, sir? The repairman inquired. Of course we're in control. Don't worry. Firmly, he disengaged Cortland's fingers. Now where is your swibble? He glanced around the room. I'll have to hurry. There isn't much time left. I haven't got a swivel, Cortland said. For a moment it didn't register, then a strange, intricate, intricate expression crossed the repairman's face. No swivel? But you told me. Something went wrong, Cortland said hoarsely. There aren't any swivels. It's too early. You haven't been invented. Understand? You came too soon. The man's eyes popped. Clutching his equipment, he stumbled back two steps, blinked open his mouth and try to speak. Too soon? The comprehension arrived. Suddenly he looked older, much older. I wondered. All the damaged, all the undamaged buildings, the archaic furnishings, the transmission machinery must have misshaped. Rage flushed, misphased. Rage flushed over him. Hold on a second. Still trying to load a battle. It's giving me a lot of time to read, but this battle isn't loading. Rage flushed over him. That instantaneous service. A new dispatch should have struck the old mechanical system. Should have stuck to the old mechanical system. I told them to make better tests. Lord, there's going to be hell to pay if we ever get if we ever get this mix up straightened out. I'll be surprised. Bending down furiously, he hastily dropped his equipment back into the case. In a single motion, he slammed and locked it. Straightened up, bowed briefly at Cortland. Good evening, he said frigidly, and vanished. The circle of watchers had, had nothing to watch. The swivel repairman had gone back to where he came from. After a time, Pestbroke turned and signaled to the man in the kitchen. Might as well shut off the tape recorder, he muttered bleakly. There's nothing more to record. Good lord, Hurley said, shaken. A world run by machines? Faye shivered. I couldn't believe that little fellow had so much power. I thought he was just a minor official. He's completely in charge, Cortland said harshly. There was silence. One of the two children yawned sleepily. Faye turned abruptly to them and, had, and herded them efficiently into the bedroom. Time for you to go to bed. Time for you two to be in bed, she commanded with false gaiety. Protesting sullenly, the two boys disappeared and the door closed. Gradually, the living room broke into motion. The tape recorder man began rewinding his reel. reel. The legal stenographer shakily collected her notes and put away her pencils. Hurley lit up a cigar and stood puffing moodily, his face dark and somber. I suppose, Cortland said finally, that we've all accepted it. We assume it's not a fake. Well, Pestbroke pointed out, he vanished. That ought to be proof enough, and all the junk he took out of his toolkit. It's only nine years, Parkinson 
the electrician the electrician said thoughtfully Wright must be alive today let's look him up and stick a shiv into him army engineer McDowell agreed RJ Wright it ought to be possible to locate him maybe we keep it from happening how long would you guess people like him could keep the swivels under control Anderson asked Cortland shrugged wearily no telling maybe years maybe a century but sooner or later something is going to come up something they didn't expect and then it will be predatory predatory machinery preying on all of us Faye shuddered violently it sounds awful I'm certainly glad it won't be for a while. You and the repairman, Cortland said bitterly. As long as it doesn't affect you. Faye's overwrought nerves flared up. We'll discuss it later on. She smiled jerkily at Pestbroke. More coffee? I'll put some on. Turning on her heel, she rushed from the living room into the kitchen, where she was filling the silex with water. The doorbell rang, quietly rang. The room full of people froze. They looked at each other, at each other, mute and horrified. He's back, Hurley said thickly. Maybe it's not him, Anderson suggested weakly. Maybe it's the camera people, finally. But none of them moved toward the door. After a time, the bell rang again, louder and more insistently. We have to answer it, Pestbroke said woodenly. Not me, the legal stenographer quavered. This isn't my apartment, McDowell pointed out. Corlin moved rigidly, rigidly toward the door. Even before he took hold of the knob, he knew what it was. Dispatch. Using its newfangled instantaneous transmission, something to get work crews and repairmen directly to their stations so control of the swivels would be absolute and perfect, so nothing would go wrong. But something had go wrong. The control had fouled itself up. It was working upside down, completely backward, self-defeating, futile, it was too perfect. Gripping the knob, he tore the door open. Standing in the hall were four men. They wore plain gray uniforms and caps. The first of them whipped, his, whipped off his cap, glanced at, the, at a written sheet of paper, and then nodded politely at Cortland. Evening, sir, he said cheerfully. He was a husky man, wide-shouldered, with a shock of thick brown hair hanging over his sweat, shiny forehead. We've uh, got a little lost, I guess. Took a while to get here. Peering into the apartment, he hitched up his heavy leather belt, stuffed his route sheet into his pocket, and rubbed his large, competent hands together. It's downstairs in the trunk, he announced, addressing Cortland and the whole living room of people. Tell me where you want it, and we'll bring it right up. We should have a good, a good sized space. We should have a good sized space. That side over there by the window should do. Turning away, he and his crew move energetically toward the service elevator. These late model swivels take up a lot of room. Bum, bum, bum. The end. So that was Service Call by Philip Dick. Interesting story. Very interesting story. Uh, I have a feeling that this game is not loading. For some reason, it will not let me into a battle. And that means I can't get the extra currency or stars or whatever in this game. So I can actually get a tier 3 uh, vehicle, which is what I require in order to proceed so i think i'm going to stop the stream here we tried valiantly valiantly to uh get into this game i'm not sure what the deal is there's a, a hundreds of players in the hundred players in the queue numbers counting down a little bit we'll try this will be our last attempt to get in if we can't get in after this then i apologize but i hope you enjoyed the story <laughs> nonetheless Counting down. Oh, Q. 
queue keeps going up and down. This is getting, this is disappointing. <laughs> this is terribly disappointing. Well, I hope that we can play around. I think I've waited long enough. Go ahead and exit the battle. And then let's uh, stop this stream and then we'll come back in with a different stream <laughs> in probably like 15 minutes or less, hopefully. Thank you very much for watching. I apologize for there not being any gameplay, but I'm gonna try not to die in a different game. Have a good day. <laughs>